Mr. Majority Floor Leader. Mr. Speaker, I now move that the gentleman from the 2nd District of Agusan del Sur, Representative Eddie Bong Plaza, be recognized to avail of the privilege hour. I move, Mr. Speaker. The distinguished gentleman from the 2nd District of Agusan del Sur is hereby recognized. Please proceed. Good afternoon uh, to all my colleagues and most especially uh, to my neighbor, uh, Manoy uh, Subiri. Uh, good afternoon. Mr. Speaker, as one of the many provincianos in Congress, I am very much in support of the national government's effort in the fight against COVID-19 since this crisis has befell us. My office kept in close coordination with my constituents and constantly being updated on the situation on the ground. I can say that all the actions of the LGUs in my province and the two congressional offices are properly coordinated and we are one in our fight locally against this dreaded disease. And likewise, in supporting and promoting the national government's effort to curb the current crisis. As we speak, Mr. Speaker, the province of Agusan del Sur remain COVID-free and we intend to keep it at that. We are, we are all very much aware how contagious and deadly this virus is and how much it strained our country's health sector, the national budget, and the overall economy. For a province like ours, given our limitations, we cannot afford to battle head on with this disease. It is an understatement to say that it is going to be catastrophic. In our case, if it does happen. So, Mr. Speaker, we are dealing with this crisis proactively by preventing this virus to set its foot in the province. From February to April, the province have issued eight executive orders and one Sangunia Panalawiga resolution to prepare against COVID-19, which was primarily directed to keep the province with a path of contagion. A comprehensive action plan was immediately put in place. The provincial health cluster sprang into action early in March, along with the establishment of the Provincial Emergency Operations Center, Provincial Communication Facilities and Public Information Protocol was set up. A multi-agency task force was established to man and strengthen border checkpoints. An information system for collecting and storing data on the province health situation on the ground preventive measures was put in place for decision and policy making purposes especially for quick responses. Financial resources were secured, food security plan put in place, provisions for relief, assistance, and incentive for frontliners and volunteers were ready and were actually implemented and being implemented as we remain on alert status. 105 quarantine areas were put up for the entire province three managed by the province, and 102 are strategically distributed in the city, municipalities, and barangays. The Philippine National Police, along with individual and organization volunteers, regularly patrol our, street, our streets to enforce the quarantine protocol. There are also initiatives to ensure food and non-food security for the entire province. In short, Mr. Speaker, we have made great strides in preventive measures with so many sacrifices on our part to keep the province COVID-free as our contribution to our national effort to keep down infectious, infection cases and preventing this disease to wreak havoc in the country, especially on places that are less prepared against it. While we are at it, Mr. Speaker, we are well aware of the national situation and we remain concerned for other areas contiguous and neighboring to our province as we struggle to keep safe the province from contagion. We are making special efforts to make sure the needs and concerns of nearby neighboring provinces 
especially those battling COVID-19, are met promptly and sufficiently. We designed and implemented border arrangement transactions to maintain unhampered flow of supplies and keep movement of people in check, especially those coming from the outside. While we respect and abide by the established national protocol on quarantine, we at the same time implement stricter measures in keeping our pro proactive preventive stance. We understand that the national protocol that was established was heavily based on the situation in areas heavily compromised, and we are one with them that those measures are necessary to stem the, heart, the tide of contagion. However, Mr. Speaker, with the stated situation in my province, which relies on preventive measures, we cannot help but, but be more stricter. This situation, Mr. Speaker, has placed officials of the province in quandary as public pronouncements of national officials on TV, on national TV, clarifying the quarantine protocols has made our stricter measures appear in violation of the national quarantine protocol and caused confusion and conflict between our people in the field, implementing the local measures and especially those coming from the outside of the province. Despite this, Mr. Speaker, the local officials of the province are standing back of their measures, willing to face sanctions if indeed their actions are in violation of the quarantine protocol. But with this continued insistent, insistence of local measures, Mr. Speaker, we were able to keep the province COVID-free until now and kept ourselves always on our toes to keep the status quo with regard to COVID infection cases cases. Also, Mr. Speaker, with our strict measures, we are also able to apprehend APORs who abuse their privilege under the quarantine protocol. There was this incident of an ambulance coming from outside of the province, refusing to be inspected at the border checkpoint from our end. An ambulance from the outside entering the province with respect to COVID case is not usual. But an ambulance going out of the province upon inspection, uh, going out of the province is. Upon inspection, we found one family as passengers going into the province, so we subjected them to quarantine protocol. Another incident involved a member of law enforcement agency who also refuses to be subjected to a checkpoint inspection. But checkpoint officials of the province insisted on the process and found the vehicle was carrying women, entertainers from other provinces. Drivers and crews of cargo vehicles that are supposed to be just passing through were found to be stopovers and even stayed overnight, evading quarantine measures. This, Mr. Speaker, are instances that illustrate our situation in the province. We allow this unhampered flow of supposedly efforts without undergoing through our own measures to keep the province COVID-free. All our efforts and sacrifices to shield the province from contagion and protect our people from this dreaded disease will simply come to naught. These incidents may also be happening in other provincial LGUs. Lately, the mayor of the municipality of Santo Domingo in Albay province confirmed that an ambulance who evaded the checkpoint was found to be carrying two passengers who just flew in from New York. I am sure these incidents are found and do not happen in heavily, heavily compromised areas such as Metro Manila as the people there are really confronted by this life-threatening disease. Unlike in the provinces where people are more complacent and do not understand how difficult it is from the governance perspective, confronting and managing such threats. Mr. Speaker, 
Having said this, may I, in behalf of my constituents and the entire province of Agusan del Sur, and I am sure other provinces in the same situation can relate to this, respectfully appeal to IATF and to the national government to issue statements to the effect allowing less compromised provincial local government units to implement quarantine protocols that best suit their local conditions, provided that the relaxation of easing of quarantine measures below the national standard shall be subjected to IATF approval. However, a stricter measures should not be a problem as long as it does not effectively hamper the overall goal of winning the fight against COVID. Some people may interpret this as causing delays or creating inconveniences, but as we say, it is better to be on the side of caution. And may I also strongly suggest, Mr. Speaker, for all the regions and provincial local government units who are less prepared in terms of manpower and resources to respond to the COVID threat and who remain COVID-free or in few cases be subjected to capacity development by the Department of Health and other private, private health institutions. This way, Mr. Speaker, we can conduct a whole nation approach against the dreaded disease expected to linger for long. Perhaps DILG can conduct an inventory of regions and provinces in order to assess their readiness and preparedness against this virus in order to establish priority in capacity development. Ito na po, Mr. Speaker, ang panahon upang ang mga LGUs ay mag-level up or magpakitang gilas dahil sa nangyayaring pandemic na COVID-19 dito sa buong mundo at lalong-lalo na dito sa ating bansa. Sana po, Mr. Speaker, and I hope the appeal and suggestion of this humble representation do not fall on deaf ears as we expect a long duration battle against this COVID virus. The provinces like ours need encouragement that our efforts and sacrifices are being recognized. We need assurances that the gains we so far had accomplished will not be wasted to which we can improve upon and use as capital to further our own battle with this threat and win against it as our own contribution in the national effort in winning this war. Mr. Speaker, together with Honorable Carap Spaduano, we just filed a resolution to this effect and I hope my honorable colleagues will find merit in this and generously require their support the resolution reach the floor. Once the resolution reached the floor. Thank you again, Mr. Speaker, and good afternoon to all my colleagues. Thank you, the Honorable uh, Edibon Plaza, Majority Leader. Mr. Speaker, I move that we refer the speech of the Honorable Edibon Plaza to the Committee on Rules for its appropriate action. I move so, Mr. Speaker. Is there any objection? Hearing none, same is approved. Majority Leader.